That's a good looking head. It, it is a great head. Put the chair back on the bar. Y'all getting kind of demanding. Good, how you doing? Well, I did a phenomenal job at Oregon, uh, you know, obviously playing with tempo, uh, which, uh, you know, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And certainly when they play fast, uh, get, 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 you lose eye control defensively. You don't get your cleats in the dirt. You don't get ready to play. You get out leveraged on formations. And, and that's what tempo creates. And that's something that Chip's brought to college football, along with a lot of other offensive coaches. Uh, but Chip's done an outstanding job. Really good players keep me up late at night. And then we prepare our players. Uh, you know, our offense plays with tempo, plays fast at times. Uh, but, but you become good at what you see a lot defensively, in my experience. And, and, and Coach Smart does a great job as far as practice schedules of making our guys practice against tempo, whether we're getting ready for a team that plays with tempo or not. Because you never know when you're going to get it, so you got to be prepared for it. So <clears throat> with some teams. And so I think it's really important that you prepare for those looks, and that's something we spend a lot of time on as far as the tempo is concerned. And uh, just thoughts on TCU, what you're trying to see from them, maybe what do you guys expect to do? Well, very explosive offense. I think they lead the country in, uh, in explosive plays of 50 yards or more. Uh, I think they're second in 40-yard plays or more. Very experienced team. you got close to 200 snaps on their offensive line. Depending on what personnel grouping you're looking at, you know, nine starters that are seniors. Uh, so a very talented out wide, obviously, with Johnston and Williams. Uh, but Barber and Davis are really good slot receivers. You know, Davis has got six touchdowns as a returner, five as a punt returner, one as a kick returner. Duggan's an outstanding player, can hurt you with the legs and the arm. Uh, but they're a balanced team. They run the ball extremely well. So whatever personnel grouping you're looking at, it's really about 50-50 run pass when it all boils down to it. So I think they do a really good job of staying balanced, which I think helps them create explosive plays down the field. Well, we work on scramble drill a lot, obviously not enough. We gave up 14 points um, in the Ohio State game on, on scramble pass. And we had, you know, initially you have the receiver covered and then you got to win in space versus a very skilled player. And they've got a bunch of skilled players as well as far as TCU is concerned. So, <clears throat> so something you continue to work on, finish on the quarterback better and finish down the field on receivers better, which we, obviously we, we have not done a great job of that. And we spent more time working on it. As many as you can have. The most exerting thing you do as a football player is rush the passer. It's the most exerting thing you do. And when a guy, when big guys, in my experience, have run out of gas, they're done. There's nothing left. And when they are done, I mean, you, they can't help you anymore. So you have to have as many as you can that are that can go rush the edges, that can go push the pocket in the middle. Uh, you can never have enough. I can assure you that. And any time we have an, an opportunity to go a one-for-one, one, which means if they have subbed or the ball's gone out of bounds and we have a chance to sub, we're going to sub. We don't ever want our big guys playing, you know, more than six snaps. We, we want to be able to rotate, and we need to have different combinations of guys probably in there together. And some guys can sustain and play longer than others. Uh, but we, we're going to rotate our big guys. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very difficult. There's not a lot of men walking around this earth that can do what he can do. Well, I think it's very difficult to put yourself in a position to, to be here. 
Uh, you know, I credit Coach Smart a lot for that. I, I credit this staff a lot for that and these players uh, to be able to stay humble, uh, to stay in the moment, uh, to be where your feet are. And those are things that we constantly are talking to our players about. But the leadership from Coach Smart's been outstanding as far as managing the moment we're in, but also from a staff standpoint, spearheaded by him, is looking forward to the to the things that, that can take us down. You know, what, what, where do the mighty fall? And those are things we address with our team a lot. And uh, and our, our players certainly understand that. But I credit our players a lot too, because it, it, they have to have a certain level of buy-in in order to not just practice what you preach. And and, and our players have done that. <coughs> Staying there, a lot hard, a lot hard. It's, it's, it's you know the pitfalls of the, the the of the world we're in right now, especially in NIL and who's getting what and why isn't this happening for me and the transfer portal and uh, you know to, to lose only one football player going into this game uh, says a lot about our program. Well, it depends on who it is, but. And, and some guys can play longer than others. Some guys, you know, after three. No, but until Jalen gets tired. <laughs> well, I mean, there's multiple guys that, you know, considering the, the, the amount of, you know, extremely talented players we lost off last year's defense and to see, you know, Pop, Jamon, uh, how he's come along, Smile Munden, you know, those guys have played really good football for us. Zion Logue, uh, uh, Nazir Stockhouse inside, done a fantastic job for us. Bobby Bills had a really good year. Malachi Starks is a true freshman. Chris Smith has been a guy that we knew was going to play well and has had a fantastic year for us. So, I mean, it, the list goes on and on when you've played good football of guys that you were counting on stepping up, needed to step up, and, and certainly a lot of those guys have. Drew, I think, is outstanding over the last two years, listening to him message our team, message our staff. Uh, I think does a, a fantastic job of, of pulling everyone together, understanding the, the, the concept of the team and how important that part of, of, uh, of it is. And I've been really, really impressed with Drew and, and, and his messaging for our football team and for our staff. Well, a bunch of them last year was burn the boats. Uh, he talked about that to our football team, which was an awesome story. And obviously, my dad was a histor history teacher, so I heard a lot of these stories at home. My dad was a great storyteller. But uh, he uh, talked in terms of, of that mentality going into a game. Uh, but he's had a lot of really good stories. It's probably too many to, to tell and how well he relates with our football team and our staff. And I think that's the thing. It's, it's, it's not just a, a great story. It's relating to the situation at hand and understanding where we are as a team. And I think, <clears throat> obviously, he has a lot of communication with Coach Smart. And uh, their communication and, and messaging has been really good. Well, I think that it's really important because in, in our society right now, you don't know what messaging our guys are hearing. Social media, negativity, everyone has a platform. No matter how ill-informed and ignorant the platform may be, everyone has a platform. So I think it's really important for our guys to understand the messaging from our organization. I don't know. I've never done it before. Ivan, how are we doing? <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know that there would be one moment. I think it would be 
his to capture his career and tell that story is pretty amazing. Uh, to see a guy that dreamed to come to the University of Georgia, be the quarterback at Georgia, it's what he always wanted to do, to walk on, to have it not going the right way or see it the way he saw it, to go to Jones Junior College in Ellisville, Mississippi, uh, to come back to Georgia. And when I stepped on campus, I guess a spring ago, he was third string. And I think Todd Munkin said it best, we kept telling him he wasn't good enough and he kept proving us wrong. So the, the Todd said that last, I saw a quote last for the Peach Bowl, I think it was, but he kept proving us wrong. And it's a great story about resiliency, uh, persistence, uh, which we don't have a lot of that in our society right now. And a, a guy that continued to, to stay at what he wanted and was unwilling to compromise. So I don't think you can put one one moment into it. I think you got to look at the whole story. Yeah, in a month you can screw a lot of things up. <laughs> I like having the time frame we have. Uh, you never have enough time, but <clears throat> you can start creating a lot of issues for yourself when you got a month of what the what if game, I call it. Of what if they do this or what if they do that? Well, they haven't done that. So let's make an adjustment in the game. But that, that time you have sometimes is too much time. Well, I thought you know, we interviewed him, and, and right after the interview, we all knew as a staff that's the guy we needed to hire. Extremely bright, uh, great personality, uh, been great with our players, has brought some good ideas to doing some things a different way, which is always good. You need to have different ideas that, that inject into your staff. And uh, But I think jadera has got a huge future in this profession. Uh, you know, Dalen's really a guy, a very physical corner, a guy that's willing to tackle. That's not always the case with some corners, uh, but extremely bright, intelligent. Uh, I think he's got a great future at Georgia. Uh, <coughs> really has learned a lot of the stuff and the techniques and the fundamentals of what we work on extremely well, and I think he's got a really bright future at Georgia. Corey really has never played defensive back before. He was more of a receiver. He kind of played like an outside backer. Uh, in high school, so there's a lot of firsts for him. And when you're playing in a complex system that depends on the safety to make all the calls, that's been there's been a learning curve. Jacory is extremely bright, but he's doing a lot of things for the first time he's ever done them. So you have to account for that. And he's again he's got a very bright future at Georgia. He's going to be a really good football player. He has ball skills. He can run. He's got girth in his body. He can tackle. He's a willing tackler. Uh, he's a great young man and, and somebody that I, I enjoy coaching. <coughs> well, you know, again, a guy that's great resiliency and some tough setbacks with his foot and his knee last year. Uh, and then coming back off that, I don't know that Tyke was probably full speed till about midseason. And he's worked himself into that role. And it's been tough and uh, frustrating for him probably at times uh, with playing time. But a guy that's a really good football player, he's done a great job when he's had his opportunities in the defensive backfield for us, uh, but also done a really nice job for us on special teams. Really impressed. Uh, Dean Ricardo and Miller are both talented guys. They have a good stable of backs. They do some two back at times. Uh, but that's the thing about this football team. You don't, don't get confused. They're, they're a very physical team. Um, they run the ball extremely well. They're very balanced in what they do by personnel grouping. They're about 50-50 across the board, run and pass. And that's, uh, sometimes you get, you hear air raid, you get a little confused on, on that. This, this is a very physical team that runs the ball extremely well. Thank you. What's been the most special part of your favorite? 
I like winning, so uh, winning games is a lot of fun. So, But I don't know there would be one thing for me. I, I enjoy this is a, a very enjoyable group of players to be around. It's a great staff to work with. Coach Smart and I, of course, go way back and are very close. But just I think the day-to-day -day operation uh, with the staff and the, and the players has been a lot of fun. Okay, so the team I cover, <coughs> no, yeah. I deal with Quan Cosby since allowed. Yeah. Yeah, Quan's a great guy. What's your favorite memory of the Texas Longhorn taking it back? Well, he caught a touchdown pass against Ohio State that was pretty important. Uh, uh, but Quan was a great player for us. Uh, my youngest son, Witt, who is now a junior in high school, he could, could not pronounce his Q's and C's when he was little. And when he caught the touchdown pass uh, against uh, in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State, I remember Witt came to me and said, Ton Tosby's a great player, Dad. I was like, well, it's not really how you pronounce his name, but it's close. But he was a great player, great young guy, and uh, I hope he's doing well. Doing great. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, you got it. Well, again, I, I think that as a defensive or offensive player, you get used to what you see. So as an offensive line, you get four down, you get three, four structure, two overhang backers. You know, most everybody in college football runs some form of that. And now when you go face something that you've never faced before, it creates a little angst, a little uncertainty about, well, how are we going to block this? How are we going to protect this? Where are these guys? Because <laughs> it's not a normal structure that you face. It's kind of like when you're a defensive coach and you face the option. Well, it's not really something we see a lot, and you got to be able to adjust and adapt to it. You know, different than you play somebody that's got a two-back system now. Well, it's not really something you see a lot. When I first got into coaching, that's what everybody did. So I think you get good and you get more familiar with the things you see. It's just not something you see a lot of, and um, and I think that's what I would I would equate it to. <clears throat> Three did pretty good when he came in. Both backs are big, strong, physical guys. Um, run behind their pads. They get north and south. I think that a lot of their a lot of their run game is downhill running game. That's what they want to do. Again, as I said before, they're a very balanced football team. They run the ball extremely well. They have an offensive line that has about 180 starts. So they got a very experienced offensive line, and they have a quarterback that can hurt you running the ball and throwing it. So they, they, that helps everybody within the, the running game system right there. Well, he had a bunch against Michigan, and I think Michigan's pretty good on defense. So uh, ran the ball extremely well. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to account for his legs, and that's what's very difficult to defend is the off rhythm plays um, with a quarterback like him, and he creates a bunch, and he creates a bunch of them and creating explosive plays. So then you got design running game, which he obviously does extremely well, and then you have the off rhythm plays, which he you know creates a lot of issues for. So absolutely, we've got to be dialed in as far as rushing the passer, as far as keeping our rush lanes, staying disciplined in our rush lanes. To be able to, you know, to, to be able to limit him. What's that? Well, he's extremely talented. I mean, he's a, a, a 300 pound plus guy uh, that has fast twitch, has really good block recognition as far as run pass pullers. Uh, you know, some guys have innate ability to to see and, and recognize those things, and Jalen has that ability. <laughs> well, we try and create as many one-on-ones as we can. You know, it's hard to chip a guy inside, so that's one thing. But we know people are going to turn the protection to him. We've got to do a good job of trying to create as many one-on-ones as we can. He said he prides himself on being kind of a four-down player, three-down player. No, oh, he's a four-down player. He also said he got tired of the people. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well we, uh, the most exerting thing you can do as a football player is rush the passer. And that's where we got to do a good job. Uh, we do we do a good job of managing snap counts in the game and making sure because once you once a big guy runs out of gas they're done. I mean they're they're not going to regain. It's not like a skill player. 
So uh, we got to make sure that we uh, manage those snaps the best we can. Coach Scott says he's very coachable for a guy with his ability. Yeah. His, his pedigree. Extremely he's bright, good. extremely intelligent, very coachable. Uh, how, how does that express itself in terms of just growing his game <coughs> and improving his game? You know, well, you got to have guys that are willing to listen, that are willing to be coached, and Jalen certainly is. Ron Corson, our, our head of sports medicine, who does a phenomenal job, uh, and Coach Smart met with our entire team the next morning, uh, explained the injury, uh, the unfortunate situation, uh, and, and made sure our players understood uh, what happened uh, and, uh, and the circumstances Ladies within it and, and how it happened. Five minutes are remaining in the Georgia media session. Five minutes are remaining. What does he mention to the team? Who's that? Chris Smith, Monday night. Oh, yeah. Fans, don't forget to join us all weekend for Playoff Fan Central. Playoff Fan Central is located here at the Los Angeles Convention. Well, he's been able to accomplish as a safety at Georgia a lot more than, a, than the rest of us, I can tell you that right now. Uh, and what he's, you know, the, the, the leadership he provides, the work ethic, the practice, practice habits. Uh, you know, he, he's what you want in a player. I'm a huge Chris Smith fan. Uh, you love the guy, uh, how he goes about his business. And, and I would say this, he'll get mad when I say it, but, you know, the intangible quality he has supersedes his ability. Uh, you know, and, 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 I, and that, that's a compliment for, for how he goes about his business. We realize this is a dumb question, but a lot of people compare Stetson's career to a movie. Is there an actor out there that you think could play Stetson in Seth Bennett? <laughs> I don't know. you got to ask somebody else. I don't know about that. So there's only one Stetson Bennett. As far as the football team, the entire team, yeah, the team, the coaches, everybody. Uh, you know, I, I was. Uh, we we're very young, you know, we're, and you never really know when you're young, or what you're going to get, how you're going to respond in front of eighty thousand people, you know. And, and I think that this, I've said this before. I think our offense kind of let a very young, youthful defense kind of get its footing. As the season went, I mean, first ball game of the year is 28 nothing, and you ain't sat down yet. And so they enabled us to, to get our grounding a little bit, to get some younger guys that maybe have not been in this position before a little bit more grounded. <clears throat> so I think we've played really good complementary football, starting out with that, which I think that was critical, to let our guys get not have to play a tight game early and be able to grow a little bit as a, as a, as a defense. And then as we've continued to grow and progress, uh, you know, they've done everything that I know Coach Smart's asked as a head football coach, as we've asked as assistants. I think we've grown in some, in some maturity roles that we needed to grow in. And, uh, and you credit the players on that, and you credit the structure of our program. On that structure, I know Kirby and Drew Brandon talked to the team in the offseason about like how the lighting ball and preventing some plays this year. Absolutely. I think that the messaging from Coach and from Drew have been outstanding. And our players are bought in because they see the success that we've had. And it's easy to sell it when, they're, when we have success. So our players understand that there's something we're doing right as far as those things are concerned. But, you know, I love those settings, those skull sessions that are really intimate as far as your team is concerned and your players are concerned. you got guys that are speaking and telling their story. And you learn so much more about somebody rather than just the football side of things. And I think those have been really, really beneficial for our team. I was here about Drew. What, what, is, what is it about Drew? I think Drew does a great job of, it's one thing to tell a story. It's another thing to tell a story that's meaningful that our players will understand. Burn the boats last year going into the national championship game. <laughs> great mentality. And that's it. This is it. This is all we got. But then changing the narrative a little bit here and there that keeps our players interested uh, that, that, uh, and it relates well with our team. And it's a message that Coach Smart wants delivered and I think it's been, I think it's been huge for us. All right.
Ladies and gentlemen, there is one minute yeah. remaining. Nice the doors are yeah, right. Yeah, how you doing? Good to see you. Take care. Yeah. No, Ross, yeah. How you doing, buddy? You doing all right? Yeah, you doing good?